Sorry, John. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, you're trying to tell me something, Dee? Um, so we've just heard several ways that we can show solidarity um, with our young people through the School Strike for Climate event uh, and express our support for much greater action on climate change. Uh, there is another way of taking action that's available to us as people who live in a democracy, and that's writing to or speaking to uh, our local Member of Parliament. Um, so let's say that you've heard the case for investments in renewables that Thea has outlined. Uh, and you're convinced. And let's say you've you've listened to Chris and, and Moni act about acting on, on climate change as part of Christian faith and being a follower of Jesus, and you're inspired. So you think, I'm going to write to my member, a local member of parliament about this, or I'm going to speak to them. But then a doubt comes up in your mind straight away. Will it make any difference? And, and look, why would they pay attention to me anyway? So let's look at some of the responses to that doubt. Dee, if I could have the first slide, please. Oops, what's there? Oh, great. Um, so the first response is, which is actually not written on the slide, the first response is that it's actually their job to represent you in the parliament, your local member's job. Um, you may have voted for them, you may not have voted for them, but regardless of how you voted, um, you're their constituent and it's their responsibility to represent you. Um, look, for some people that might seem a bit optimistic and naive, but we hear and we know that most local members seem to take their responsibilities pretty seriously, and that includes understanding the concerns of the people in their electorate. That doesn't mean that they will act on what you say, but at least it gets you in the door and it, and it gets you a hearing. There's other reasons it may be important to speak to them. Um, your MP might hold a, a key position. They might be a minister or a parliamentary secretary who has responsibilities for decisions in the area that you care about or they may be a shadow minister or a shadow parliamentary secretary. They could be on a, a parliamentary committee that's looking at a particular issue which may influence and shape, and shape policy. Um, even if they don't have a formal role, they might have relational influence in their party. Uh, they might not be a key leader, but they might have influence with people who are key leaders. Or they might speak to people in the corridors. Um, so even if you know they hold a view opposite to yours, speaking Speaking to them at least lets them be aware that not everyone uh, thinks like they do, including people in their electorate. And the final reason, uh, as I said at the start, is that we, we live in a democracy and we have the, the privilege and responsibility of taking part in the political process. So as, as citizens, we can have a say and some small role uh, in influencing the policies of our nation beyond just voting uh, in elections, critical though that is. And I guess the final thing is, uh, that final point, it still, it still matters. People in, people in politics and more experienced advocates tell us that writing letters or speaking to our local MP can still have an impact. Just yesterday, I, I was at a, a, a gathering uh, with some very experienced climate activists in a workshop about how we respond uh, post COVID. And these experienced activists were saying that if a politician receives a letter from a person in their electorate, then they that are, they assume that it represents the views of many other people, perhaps dozens, but perhaps up to a hundred other people. So it's really worth, um, you know, putting what we think down on, on paper. And a former political staffer uh, who was advising one, some of our advocacy in Uniting told us <clears throat> that local MPs may have become a bit immune to really heavil, heavily organised campaigns from, you know, lobbying organisations um, or from professional advocates but they still take seriously the concerns raised by members of, of their electorate that are just thoughtfully and personally put down on paper or, or spoken. They still take that seriously. Uh, and I guess a final reason we might do it is uh, it's not just about the effect it has on them, but it's about the effect it has on us. Taking part in the political process um, or living out our discipleship in that way um, can energise us and encourage us to do more as well. Um, could I just quickly have the next slide, D? So if you don't know who your federal MP is, there's some websites that can help you uh, that provide um, information about that. So you click on those websites and you can quickly locate who your state federal um, member, uh, member is 
or um, sorry, who your state member is or who your federal member is. Uh, it's an easy way to, to, to find out who they are if you don't know already and their, their, their address. Um, okay, so now thinking we're gonna contact them, what do we wanna say? So we're here thinking about a letter, uh, but the, this could be an email as well. People tell us a letter is probably a, a, a written or a typed letter is probably the most effective way, but this, this could apply to, this, this could apply to a, uh, an email as well. So before you write your letter or email, have a think about what you want to say. Um, and these, on, on these points on this list are some of the most important points to consider. And they also really provide a simple structure uh, for your email. So the first thing is, who are you? And one of the most important things to get to say is that you're a constituent, that you're, you're part of their electorate. But you could also, you, you, if you are part of a local group, um, you might be part of a local church congregation or some other group. Um, that's part of their community and that they know, and you could say that. Most importantly is talk about your connection to the issue and why and what you are concerned about. Uh, Moni very powerfully started when he um, began his speaking, talked about um, the experience, the climate impacts on his own family uh, that led to the deaths of people in his own family and inundation of land, like a very personal, devastating connection to the issue. So whatever our connection to the issue is, we can highlight that. Um, and talk about why it's important to you, again, from your experience, but also in terms of your values, why you care about it. Um, you might talk about the value that you have about concern for people's future and concern for you know, the future of children or grandchildren. Uh, I remember when the Synod resolution passed at Synod, Jane Fry, the, the General Secretary of the Synod, introduced the whole conversation. And she introduced the conversation about climate change by saying this. She said, the most important thing about me for this topic that we're about to discuss is not that I'm the general secretary of the Synod, but it's that I'm a grandparent. Uh, and that was more important than everything. She wanted a future for her grandchildren. And both Moni and Chris talked about that issue as well. So share your values. Um, and finally, the most important thing um, is to, to outline what you actually want, what you're asking the MP to do. So that might be to bring up the issue in their party, uh, in their party and party room, to bring up the issue with the Prime Minister. We might be appealing them to listen to the experts. We might be appealing them, as Thea told us, to listen to business. Business is actually saying, we need to move, we need more certainty and we, uh, we think we need to move more to renewables. So um, but be clear about what you're actually asking your MP to do. Um, and that's where you could bring in some credible and authoritative evidence. Just really quickly, the next slide, D. Oh, sorry, the next one. It's okay. Um, sorry, John, okay. I don't think there is a next one. Oh, okay. So basically, that's the point that you might, you, want, you don't want to spend too much time on evidence, um, but you might want to appeal to one or two authoritative sources, oh, yeah. credible sources to back up what you want to say. Um, Sorry. So I'll just, no, that's fine. That's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll share that information out with the slides. Let me just finish really quickly with a story that backs up the importance of writing. I was speaking to my local MP, federal MP, uh, quite a while ago. It was on the issue of people seeking asylum. And the MP basically told me she thought we'd lost that issue and nothing much would change, which was very discouraging. So at the end of the conversation, we asked her, what do you think it would take? What would it take for there to be a change of policy in her party and the government of the day? And she said to me, I'm, I would have to see a lot more people, ordinary people like you, coming through the door or writing to me or speaking to me about that issue. Uh, and I guess that's the appeal, as Moni and others appealed to us, let's take action and communicate to as clearly as possible to our decision makers that we want change on this issue of climate and in terms of the post-COVID recovery.